grabs the opportunity to come up with a proposal, say by February, that's the first, uh, first period, right, for our uh, grant application. I'll, I'll tell you more about that uh, later. And the second deadline is May, the end of May. So if you cannot make it by the end of February, you should try your best to make it by the end of May. I mean, submitting your approved proposal for this grant application. Otherwise, as I said, after July, there's no guarantee in the next academic year we will have this fund or not. Why, why do we have this fund? Because we don't have, uh, originally we want to admit 60 students each academic year. Some of you decided to postpone, right? Uh, postponed to study, so we have the money available. So we try to make the best of those, uh, I mean the money to, you know, to benefit all of you. Uh, next year, if all of the students come to study in time, then we won't have this uh, fund available. And another thing is, for this uh, scholarship, we try to make everybody, almost everybody happy. If you can come up with something, the possibility of getting a grant is high. Although we have two categories. One is, I, I don't know if I remember, I'll, I'll, probably I'll explain that later. Uh, there are two categories for this scholarship. Um, I mean, the previous scholarship. Uh, what is extraordinary or excellent? Uh, anyway, there are two categories. The first category is 100,000 each person. And the second category is 50,000. Uh, if you cannot get the 100,000, don't ask me why. I mean, this is competitive. We're going to send your uh, application to the anonymous committee to, for review. So we're going to have, form an ad hoc committee to review your proposal. Even your proposal has been approved by your advisors. It doesn't mean this is a free ticket to your scholarship. So do you see what I'm saying? I mean, if you don't, if you haven't written a good proposal, probably won't get it at all. Uh, but the proposal, the minimum, the minimum uh, length is three thousand words, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. It's not really long. Just less than your ten paper. But try to make it, you know, as good as possible. Okay. All right. So uh, I think we have uh, about eighty percent of candidates. Okay, so today is all about your thesis and question question. Uh, we're not going to talk about anything, any other things. Just focus on your thesis, right? Okay, next page. This is a highlight. There are three things. I have three sets of regulations we're going to highlight. Uh, one is thesis writing regulation. The second is capstone project scholarship regulations. Oh, yeah, that reminds me. This, I uh, mean, the scholarship thesis. Scholarship I just mentioned does apply to Capstone Project only. If you want to write a traditional thesis, I'm sorry, <laughs> you just write a traditional. I mean, nothing wrong with that, but this is for Capstone Project, okay? Because for our uh, for the uh, educational objective of our program, we do encourage students to write a Capstone Project. Okay, and third one is qualification for the thesis advisor. I know that from our survey last time that uh, some of you have already found your advisors, right? And uh, I took a look, I take a look at those names. Yeah, they are very, very qualified uh, professors. So, so far, uh, Teddy, right? Teddy, Jessica, well, Professor Dan, Chrissy, right? Yeah. Who else? Who else did I? I mean, they, hmm? oh. oh, Professor Zhu from uh, Computer Science. All of them are very, yeah, I'm very, very qualified to be your thesis advisor, so don't worry about uh, I mean, the qualification. However, some of you may have different ideas of looking for your thesis advisor, so we're going to discuss those uh, criteria later. Okay, next page. So, okay, the first one is highlights of the thesis writing regulation. We might have passed this regulation to you last time, but we are, you know, we keep <laughs> revising that. Yeah. All right, next page. Let me just highlight a few things here. So that thesis, so for your thesis, no matter if it's a traditional one or a capstone project, you, okay, English, English. Um, 
The default version is English. But if you want to write in a language other than English, let us know first. It doesn't have to be Chinese. It can be Korean, Japanese, whatever, Vietnamese. But you need to let us know why you want to use that specific language to work on your thesis. Okay? And even though that uh, if the default version is English, you still need to have the Chinese version of what? The title and the abstract. Okay? I don't think it will be a big problem for you. So because this is a university requirement. So uh, about a thousand words, right? Abstract. I think you will write more than that. A Chinese version of title abstract of physics also needed. If you need to write it, okay, this is what I just mentioned that if you want to write uh, your thesis in a language other than English. Does anyone have already decided to write not English with this? No? Okay. For Taiwanese student, oh, if your uh, native tongue is Mandarin Chinese, please don't write in Mandarin Chinese. Uh, but if your native tongue is not Mandarin Chinese, that's possible. Okay? Alright, next page. And okay, the master thesis can be written in the form of a professional report. Uh, in our case, capstone project. And some of you asked us about what capstone project is. Um, yeah, we will let you know. I think we have the sets of the examples we just uh, distributed to you last time, right? In September. Do you still have those files? Yes. Didn't say yet. Okay, we, we will uh, post them somewhere. We cannot really distribute, distribute in our, we cannot post them in our uh, website because uh, we, we need to have the approval you know, of those authors. We try to get examples from you know, all over. And so we will also discuss what, uh, what we expect from a capstone project with your potential advisors. For example, Chrissy, Tammy, Jessica, Professor Ben, and so on. Maybe they also like to know what we expect you to write in the capstone project. But for traditional theaters, just you know, follow the university uh, criteria. All right, and uh, for your committee, for you to write your proposal, um, we don't, in our program, we don't require you to have an oral defense for your proposal. So at this stage, you don't have to you don't need a committee. You don't need a thesis committee for your proposal. Just your advisor. So you write your advisor, you discuss it with him or her, and revise it. And when you get the approval, you can use it to apply for a scholarship. But when you finish your um, thesis or capstone project, um, before your final defense, uh, you need to have, you need to form a committee. Three to five people in your committee. Normally, we have three people. If you need to have five, you know, for each committee member, we have to pay them. <laughs> so you need to tell us why we need to find five, you know, five committee members. Sometimes it's because your thesis talk is so unique. Only three people cannot, you know, evaluate the completeness of the, you know. Uh, the quality of your, your, your the content, so you need five committees. But I will leave it up to you. And uh, okay, so three committee members, and at least one should be, oh, one third. One third of them should be external, outside of uh, NCCU. If your thesis is within the university, then, I mean, your thesis advisor is NCCU professor, and that's fine. But you can also have your advisor from other universities or even from professional, you know, part of a professional status. In that case, your committee member, your two committee members, the other two committee members, at least one of them should be outside of, I mean, should be within the NCCU. Excuse me. Let me see. I think you do it this way. You don't need to have anyone, right? It's not required to have anyone within NCCU. Is that right? Yes? We don't need to have any other teacher. That's it. You need to have a teacher outside. Okay. This is 
it's a loophole, right? Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, <laughs> uh, yes. I just want to ask that because um, you said that we have to have someone out in the NCCU, right? So we need to fly them by ourselves. What? Yeah, we, we can. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you, you, you can. Yeah. You can fly. fly. But you need to so let us know. Can, it can be anyone, right? It's not, it's not, not anyone. Not anyone. No. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about the conversation later. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> right. Um, so there is a loophole here. But okay, let me do it this way. At least one from NCCU, uh, no matter he or she is your thesis advisor or committee member, why at least one from NCCU? So the person is, knows more about the regulations of this university. Uh, we, we, we don't require that strictly, but uh, for example, in the college communication, if you have your advisor outside of NCCU, actually outside the college congregation, you need to have a second advisor, co-advisor. Co but we don't have that, yeah. You don't need to have co-advisors. However, uh, look at this, for example, three member you know, structure. One, at least one from NCCU, at least one from external setting. So about a third one, either NCCU or external. Yeah. So is that clear? But if you have five people, five members, the one third will be two. Two. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yes, Jamie. Do you have a question? Okay, next page. I have a question. Oh, oh okay, yeah. So mm -hmm. the professor that should be at NCCU. I'm sorry, can if the professor from NCU that we need to choose for our defense, should we better to choose someone who is nearby our Capstone project topic, or should we choose someone sure, who sure. is like more familiar with us and uh, GC? No, normally, yeah, normally, all the three members <coughs> should have something to do with your topic. Yeah, yeah. Okay. that's also part of the, uh, you know, when you apply for your final defense, the university will yeah, review okay. who those three people are. Say you are now in global communication, you cannot find an engineer, right? Engineer. <laughs> Well, I, wait, okay, let me take my words back. Uh, you, you, you don't want to find someone who doesn't know a bit about your topic to be in your commitment. Even if he or she is a Nobel you know, laureate, I mean, if he, he or she doesn't know about your topic, then it's not, I mean, the qualifications, is not enough. Okay, next page. So, uh, okay, these are the qualifications. At least a system professor. Assistant professor and above. So for those names that you have provided regarding your potential thesis advisors, I think all of them are qualified. They are at least assistant professors and above. And uh, but there are exceptions. So if your potential thesis advisors are not assistant professors, so look at the criteria first. He or she needs to have a PhD. Excuse me, because we are the graduate program, so this is how you know how our university class. So a PhD with well acknowledged academic achievements. For example, he or she can be a researcher in say uh, academia Seneca, So she can be the assistant researcher to be a She's not he or she doesn't you know have a assistant professor certificate. If she, he or she, you know, has written a lot of publications, she's qualified, qualified. But so this is the first criteria. Second one, researchers or professionals with expertise in certain rare spatial fields or with extraordinary achievement in the same fields. Okay, so for those of you who are interested in working on really, really, you know, practical issues, sometimes you cannot find your thesis advisor from the campus. Like uh, uh, you are interested in some you know, production related issues. So maybe uh, some directors, right, producers out, outside of NCCU are qualified. So this is that uh, criteria that we are talking about. Uh, for, for example, uh, I know some of you are uh, in your internship with Taiwan Plus or Public Television Service. So there are producers or anchor persons who are you know, very, very experienced in their expertise. They are qualified. 
However, we, we need to, you know, still, we need to apply, apply to get approvals to see if they are the uh, qualified ones or not. So any questions about this part? Is it or, or, or is it both requirements? Or. Or, or. Or, or, yeah. So that person doesn't need to have a PhD. Uh, for example, in the upcoming semester, the spring semester, we're going to have a new uh, instructor, Professor Zhang Zhenxun. Uh, she's going to teach the advanced level of the production, you know, uh, mostly about documentary. I encourage you to take that course if you're interested. Especially for those of you who have, who have finished taking your basic level of the, you know, the production class. But she's an associate professor. We try to get her an associate professor position for her. But she doesn't have a PhD. But she has more than 30 years of you know, uh, you know, in the industrial uh, experience in, uh, in the production industry. Okay. All right, so if you don't have any problems with that, then we can see. Just one more question. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, if he or she, if he or she must be present in Taiwan. I mean, like, oh, because like maybe you mean for I thesis don't... advisor? Yeah. Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, so committee member. Mm, it doesn't have to. So we can do like the uh, defense online. Right. So that uh, it can be considered an uh, external, uh -huh. external committee member. Right. Oh, still we need to review this person's qualification. Right, sure, sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good question. Yeah, you can get an outside member from outside of Taiwan. Yeah, we. Uh, we, we I'm not talking about experience here with the GCIT because you're the first here. I'm uh, thinking of the experience that I know from uh, college communication. Yeah, you can get someone from the United States, from Hong Kong, from where else? Vietnam, Thailand, right? And Ukraine, right? That if, if this person is qualified, yeah. All right, next page. Uh, before writing a thesis or capstone project, you should discuss it with your thesis advisor and come up with a proposal. About. Okay, but you, your proposal only three thousand words, but this should be a very, very uh, concise, right? Precise, concise and precise proposal. Even though three hundred words are not a long paper, but every word should have its own um, weight, right? And um, after. Okay, the, the time lag between your proposal and your final paper, your final oral events, should be at least three months. For example, if you come up with your proposal in February, you are eligible to have your final defense in May. Can you make it? Okay, good. <laughs> so you can write as soon as, yeah, very soon. Any, any problems there? Any questions? No? All right. All right. So this is a traditional one, right? But uh, if you want to write a traditional thesis, these are the criteria, the contents, like your table contents, uh, your title and your programmatic, the research question, big research research questions, and you need to have a review of the relevant literature and your research methodology. Your I mean, this is for your proposal. In your um, thesis, after your methodology, it should be the data analysis session and your discussion and conclusion. But this is your proposal. So after your research and methodology, you need to you know, propose the arrangement of your chapters in your thesis. Then you should write something about your expected outcome that you need to provide your references. So within 3,000 words, this is your, uh, what your proposal looks like. I mean, for traditional thesis. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Okay. About for your capstone project, actually, they look pretty much the same. <laughs> Title, right? And grammatics or research questions, academic basis. Okay. This part is a little, a little bit different. I would say entirely. For if you want to write a traditional thesis, your literature review should be very, very solid. Because that's the basis to form your theoretical framework. But if you want to work on a capstone project, it's not really theoretical. I won't say there's no theory at all. 
since capstone project, the focus of capstone project is more practical. So whatever literature you use is to to form the basis of your academic uh, ground, not your theoretical framework. In most of the um, traditional theories I, I know of, you need to formulate a theoretical framework to, for example, you want to work on uh, some quantitative uh, research. You need to use that theoretical framework to, to do what? To confirm your hypothesis or to test your hypothesis. But if you want to work on a capstone project, that's not, that's not necessary. You can use you can use statistics or big data, but they are used to for you to uh, to describe what you will find. You are not use your statistics or numbers or big data to prove your hypothesis. So can you see the two the differences between them? For, so, uh, for the criteria of, of traditional thesis are higher, are much higher, because you need to formulate a hypothesis, I mean, a set of hypotheses, and you need to confirm them. And those hypotheses should not be proposed by someone else. They should be original, or they should be modified from some other uh, existing hypothesis. But if you want to work on a, a capstone project, that's, there's no issue. That's not an issue that we are interested in. We want to see whether your analysis can come up with some suggestion that can resolve the existing social problems, <coughs> the media industries, and so on. Okay, that's just one example. Maybe you have some other more interesting uh, cases for your, uh, uh, your, your uh, capsule project. Okay, and also methodology. Methodology for interpretation analysis. Here, there's no restriction on what kind of methods you can use. If you want to write a traditional um, thesis, sometimes we do have uh, more strict requirement for your methods to be used because uh, you cannot use a set of different methods that are against each other uh, in terms of the world views. Uh, in Chinese, we say "世界观，那世界观不一样的方法，你把它用在一起哦，是是互相打架的哈。那通常就会选择特定的那个呃，怎么讲？我觉得，OK，I uh, okay, because you you haven't taken your you haven't taken the method course. Uh, I I don't want to go to into to We in Chinese we say "认认识论". Uh, what is the English word for that? I should ask you. The English word for that. The way you know about the world. That's uh, what we call Renzi uh, If you use two different methods, they should not provide different worldview. Because in your research, we, we normally select a certain worldview to look at the phenomena. We don't use two different conflicting worldviews. I'm not saying that in the real world it doesn't happen. I'm saying that it's for your own benefit. If you two set a conflicting worldview to write a paper, it's difficult. Yeah. So okay. If, if, if this if it's the knowledge which so says in philosophy, the theory of how we know things. Like professor say how we evaluate. You say that word again? <laughs> it's very difficult to pronounce, right? Epistemology. Epistemology. Uh, epistemology. <laughs> <laughs> epistemology. Okay. Okay. Remember. But if you are not working on your uh, uh, traditional, I mean, if you are not choosing traditional things, then uh, don't bother. <laughs> don't remember. All right. Then uh, the original chapter is the outcome references, and. Uh, so I would say the major difference between the thesis, traditional thesis, and the capsule project is here. Uh, rather than literature, you, you have to, for both of them, you have to do your literature review. But for traditional thesis, you have to formulate your theoretical framework. And for capsule project, it doesn't have to. It doesn't have to, it doesn't mean you don't need to do literature review. So, do that make sense to you? 
But maybe some people say, I don't know how to do that. Well, so that's something you have to work on with your uh, thesis advisor. Okay? So can anyone uh, elaborate this part? If you want to uh, ha have some, ha has anyone started working on their thesis? Yeah? Think really, right? Yeah. So how, how did you do this part? Did you choose this one or traditional? Yeah. So, how did your advisor tell you about this part? Uh, the academic, academic basis. basis. Uh, actually, we are in the beginning of our online. So oh, we are not, this part is right? Yeah, we are not going to that part yet. <laughs> the first part is the most difficult part. You need to have a very focused, right? Focused uh, theme for your topic. Uh, if no question, then we will just move on. Okay, so is there a except for, for uh, this part of the capstone part? Is there any other uh, like standard format? For example, the size of the text or the margin of the page or the the other requirement? Ten thousand, ten. I don't know. One hundred thousand words. Uh, for example, then. like uh, maybe we have some like final assignment. They will ask us to use like double lines and the the the. the oh, I think about like whether it should be in APA or like other. Yeah, format. APA citation or something else. No, we don't have that requirement. But like uh, personally, I expect you to write in APA. It doesn't. It's not a big issue. You just use EndNote, right? Have you learned EndNotes? If you don't. Try to you know attend a workshop sponsored by the university, and EndNotes is very useful for you to okay. Eddie knows right? Yeah. Maybe you can have a workshop for us. <laughs> EndNote can help you to organize your literature. Yeah, very very <coughs> useful. Yeah. So ABA ABA uh, is the uh, expected uh, uh, style style for communication. Yeah, for communication majors. But honestly, you know, this is not a requirement. You can write in MLA, MLA. That's more for literature. Uh, the 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 literature fields, right? And uh, you can also write in Chicago style. That's more for political science, something like that. Yeah. Okay. Any any other questions? Okay, let's move on. Okay, the second part. Yeah, okay, that's the most juicy part, right? Your scholarship, okay, congratulations. This is a draft, yeah, we, because uh, as I said, uh, we're going to discuss them next Tuesday in our, uh, our meeting. So if you have any questions about it, you can, you know, you can raise, you can raise uh, here right now. The regulation apply to all GCI students who plan to write capstone projects, as I said, as their thesis. New students of their first semester, semester are excluded. Well, for most of you here, the spring semester would not be your first semester, so don't worry about it. But for the new student, we have uh, several uh, incoming students in the spring. They are not qualified to apply this. Yeah. All right, next. So to uh, uh, qualify for this grant, a total of seven points or more are required according to the following criteria. So your application will be graded according to the criteria here. At least seven points are necessary for you to be further qualified to be considered for the grant. But it's not, it's not difficult. Here. Seven points, right? Very easy. First, the quality and completeness of the capstone project also is 60%. And the second part is your academic GPA. Uh, if you if you are the uh, uh, spring a medical student, you need to provide two semesters, right? The GPA for two semesters. But if you are medical in uh, if you are in the fall, then you just provide the GPA for this semester. Some of your scores should be excluded. One is you if you have taken Mandarin Chinese lessons, that grade should be excluded. And your internship. Okay, this is another thing I like to tell you about. Um, Originally, we don't want your internship to be graded by uh, scores, but we, but the university is kind of late, you know, in practicing our application. So for this semester, including the summer, your internship scores 
your grade will be still uh, it will still appear in in numbers like 80 something or 90 something but if you are uh, doing your internship starting next semester, it will be only pass or no pass. So, to be fair, your internship scores will not be included in your GPA. Otherwise, it's not fair to everybody. Yeah. But actually, if you, uh, if you want to apply in, uh, in February, it's no issue at all. Because for <coughs> all the uh, students take, already taking the internship, Everybody uh, will get the scores, right, instead of pass or no pass. Uh, but probably next, uh, so starting next semester, we will exclude both Beijing Chinese lessons and internship grades, right? And then 15%, oh, this is 25%. And uh, the, the last 15% will come out, come out from your participation within GCIT, your on-campus or off-campus uh, activity participation or your contributions. You just list, you know, list the things. They are 15%. So because of, for GCID students, we don't expect you to be, to just study. We like you to be involved, either on-campus or off-campus. So you list them, but to be, uh, you need to list them in a very concrete manner and provide evidence. Uh, in Chinese, we say, yao yu nega zheng ju. So if you uh, have won an award, yeah, attach your <laughs> a, a, a copy, a full copy of the, the you know, the certificate or whatever. And if you have do some voluntary work, provide evidence. So you, for, for this 15%, it's optional, but you need to provide your um, um, evidence. If you don't, then you, you will gain less scores for this criteria. So any, any questions about this part? Mm -hmm. What counts in the participants in the program? Mm -hmm. What counts in the participation in the program? Like attending uh, lectures or some workshops? Uh, like for example, next week we have a studio workshop. Does it count as a participation? Yeah, you just, you just, I'll, I'll lead them to you. Yeah, you list them, then we decide. Okay, let us decide. I, I cannot say which can and which doesn't. So your, your perception and your judgment of participation and contribution, you list them and let the committee decide whether those things count. We will, you know, we will, I, I cannot come up with a category because, I mean, the, the, this is a real world. You know, this is not a very, very rigid, you know, society. So maybe you can come up with something that we, you know, we have not thought of. That is, oh, this is a good thing. Then you, you, you will get scores for your participation. So attending workshop, lectures, do you think they count? What do you think? Do they count? No? Will you count to them when you will evaluate the proposal? Would I count? Would I, I, I may not be the reviewer, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I will send them to, yeah. If, okay, let me, let, me, let me give you a scenario. Say if 20, 20 of you apply for this uh, thesis grant, 19 of you have attended you know, all the workshops and lecture, and one person doesn't attend any at all. So what do you think? That one person will probably lose, right? Lose his or her point on this part. So it's based on the competitive, you know, um, evidence. Not, not, not the, not which is the must or which is, is not. It's based on competition. So list as much as you can. But don't say that if you, okay, maybe I should think of a, a very absurd example that, which is uh, very obvious, not the one uh, that can be considered uh, participation. Can you give us, can, can anyone give me a, an example? Visiting Christmas uh, market at Oh, attending Christmas party. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, Christmas market. <laughs> 
well. Did you see the society opening ceremony? It could be really bad. And also the I mean, I mean uh, the video for promotion for GCIT. Yeah. Um, how about like participating in some extracurricular activities outside of NCC? Sure, sure. Yeah. Okay. Of and of members. And it's not like other contributions. And also sporting. Yeah, yes, yeah. Show a photo of your, you know, running. Yeah, yes, please. Yeah, you will be very impressed. So, any, so, but uh, for the entertainment purpose uh, participation, it's, it's, it's you know, ambiguous. Okay. You should be for the public good, right? Or, yeah. So, so, okay. Any other examples? Attending ceremony, attending, oh, if you have been the TA, right, CA, yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah, that can be counted. It doesn't have to be free service. For those of uh, participate, uh, participate I mean, activities that you, you, you got paid, it, they, they can be counted. Yeah, so like the, as, right, you have danced a lot, right, in many occasions. Yeah, yeah, it is constant. It, it can be counted, but I, I will say uh, it can be uh, con considered uh, an excellent thing though, because I will leave them to be decided by the reviewers. Yeah, and your advisors. If I know who your advisors are, they won't be the, the reviewers of the proposal. To be fair to everybody, so those four or five. Professors, we just mentioned, they won't be your <laughs> reviewers. If they have already yeah, uh, signed on your proposal, they cannot participate in the review, to be fair to everybody. Yeah. Okay, uh, so these are the very important criteria. If you have any questions, please, yeah, please raise them right now. How about the percentage distribution? 60, 25, 15, okay, to all of you? Or you want to have this to be lower, this to be higher. You just mentioned that the, this committee did not evaluate our proposal, right? The grant, the grant. Uh, uh, the, the this grant. is the grant, scholarship. So, uh, do we need to look for the grant committee too? Or do but we, but we, we don't know who your committee members are. We, at this point, we only need to know your thesis advisor. No, no, no. You don't like for this uh, uh, grant evaluation. Do we need to look for uh, professors or any advisors that they will evaluate for you, or it will be conducted by the HCAT? Yeah. 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 We won't let. Uh, yeah, because if this is a, a program, program sponsored scholarship. We will be fair, as fair as the uh, application procedure. Yeah, we won't let your thing. Yeah, so please <laughs> don't ask your thesis advisor to persuade us to give you grants. Yeah, let us decide. Okay. Yeah. So we won't let them get involved. Is that what you were asking? I was just saying, do we need to look for more uh, advisors to take on the relation, or to get more advisors? To like, we have to look for advisors for our thesis proposal. Mm -hmm. three to five. And I was asking them to look for another thesis, uh, for another professors who will evaluate our thesis proposal. For oh, I see. Uh, we will let your advisor decide that. Oh, okay. Yeah. So uh, the only requirement is your thesis advisor needs to look at your <laughs> read your uh, proposal. Uh, whether the other members, committee members, it's not necessary at this point. I know that in some other programs, some other master programs, they, they require committee members to, they, even they require students to have the oral defense for the proposal. But since this is not a requirement by NCCU, so we would not add it to your thesis at this time. We try to make this process as easy as possible. Okay, this is the thing that I like to uh, uh, emphasize again. Since within GCIT, you have a lot of things. You, you need to do a lot of things. 
You need to do your domestic internship, right? You need to do your overseas learning. The thesis is not the most important deciding element for you to graduate. See what I'm saying here? It's the requirement, because this is a requirement by Taiwanese Ministry of Education. But this is not the most important part. We won't let you, just because uh, you didn't write a good thesis, then you cannot get any, cannot get your master degree. Because you need to complete your this and that. So for the committee, for the review, you know, review or the proposal, whatever the university requires, we just follow that. We won't add more requirements to your proposal. Is, is that okay? Or do you want to have more requirements? You want to have your proposal reviewed by three people? <laughs> yeah, because yeah, we don't want that to happen. Either. All right. Any, any other questions? No. So, uh, professor, when we have to submit our uh, or present as our oral so can you see? Can you speak up a little? <coughs> when we have to submit capstone uh, and present as oral uh, committee early or miss or like my uh, for your proposal, it's not required. It's not required. But for your uh, final, it's required. Yeah. Okay, uh, let me clarify one point again. I know that in some other departments, for example, in the college communication, you need to have oral defenses twice. First, for your um, proposal, right? The second time, for your final. But here, only the final oral defense is necessary. The first one, it depends on your thesis advisor. If he or she thinks that you need to present publicly yeah, to be approved, then fine. But uh, otherwise, written approval is, uh, is sufficient. Yeah. However, well, well, okay, next semester, we're thinking of holding a forum, a workshop for those of you who are ready to graduate and present your, not your, your research. Yeah. But it's not the requirement for your uh, your degree. It's uh, it's just uh, like uh, some good things that we like you to share your research <laughs> with all the other people. Yeah. Okay. Now yeah, we'll get back to that uh, later in the next semester. All right. Then um, what if you fail to get the grant in February? No problem. You can still apply to get it. Yeah. So we have two deadlines here. One is. February, the end of February, right? We have 28 or 29 days. Yeah, 28. 28, okay. <laughs> Unfortunately, we only have 28 days. <laughs> <laughs> so, do remember to submit your uh, application. But before that, you have to get it approved by your status advisor. I will, I will, I will uh, elaborate the procedure uh, later yeah, at the end of this uh, presentation. And the next, the next uh, deadline is uh, May 31. Right? 31 days, right? 31st, okay. So how many of you uh, will apply in February? Wonderful, wonderful, okay. Yeah, so for this coming <laughs> break, you will work very hard, right? Yeah. Yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> don't go home, yeah, just stay here to write your proposal. Those who are not ready the first time are still eligible to apply again in May 2024. Yeah. But if you, I don't think whether you were that unlucky. If you fail in both times, <coughs> well, then we'll see in the next academic year who will have this uh, available or not. <laughs> if we, still, we still have this grant, then you can apply and apply and apply, right? Yeah. All right. Or maybe you, 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 you are not patient enough to wait for the grant. You say, I already finished and I'm ready. I want to graduate. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah, I have a question. So everyone can only get it once, right? If you get it the first time, the second time you can ask. No, no, no. You can steal. Just the one off, yeah, one, one off. off. Yeah. I don't know why you want to uh, 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 get to uh, uh, two times of the... Not just <laughs> <laughs> so Give the opportunity to other people, right? Yeah, this is a one off, yeah, one off offer. Yeah. All right? Any other questions? Yes. Uh, for our capstone project, if we need to do some field trips for research purpose, that would it count as um, 
learning, uh, learning. You mean uh, to be listed? Yeah, but it comes as uh, if I, I did I say public good, right? Mm -hmm. Is for you um good? Uh, you say oh I because I want to write my uh, term paper, mm -hmm. so I went to Kaohsiung. Right? Mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> It wouldn't be like in Taiwan, outside Taiwan. If you do oh. outside Taiwan for a capsule project. So would that be counted? As overseas learning? So that's yes, question. yes, yes. But uh, you need to uh, let us know what... what uh, okay, so you're talking about overseas learning. Yeah. So okay. that, that should be another oh, okay. you know, mm -hmm. workshop you know, or forum. <laughs> 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 yeah, that can be, but we need to look at your plan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, okay, probably uh, I should let you know why we provide this grant. This is not free lunch. I know that starting next semester, some of you would not, uh, are not granted it anymore, right? You don't have your tuition waiver, you don't have your uh, uh, stipend. So this grant basically serves that purpose. And as many of you uh, have already finished your courses, so you don't need to pay your uh, credit fees except for uh, internship or overseas learning. So this uh, uh, thesis grant basically serves that function. It want to make it as easy as possible. So we just get this grant and we won't. I hope, hopefully, hopefully, sometimes we have to deal with our logistic office. Hopefully, you don't need to provide any proof for this grant. Normally, for this thesis grant, you have to provide everything, right? Your receipts, your, your travel to here and there, and we have to collect those receipts to get, for you to get reimbursement. But this is a really a tedious work, so we don't want to do that. We just want to give you the, the, the scholarship, and you use that scholarship to do all the things. Not to celebrate things. I mean, you need this grant to do your thesis research. You have to print out something, you have to do your field work, right? And you have to survive, right? So you use that grant for all that, you know, those, all those functions. So if you get this grant, don't come up to us to say, hey, I need to go to Kaohsiung. Can you provide the transportation fees to me? And it's included. We just don't need you to provide your receipts. We want to make it as you know, easy and as convenient as possible. So this is not free lunch. This is your, your research fund to do your thesis job. Any, any, uh, any question about that? All right. So because I know some of you will be free from you know, scholarship next semester. So we want to have this for you to, uh, to make your research work. You know, as efficient as possible. And one other thing is, you can also, um, for those of you who will not get any full of half scholarship, you can find job on and off campus to be CA, to be research assistant, to do you know, any other types of uh, work. Yeah, so you are not restricted anymore. I know that for the first, first year, some of you are the full scholarship uh, awardees. You are right, you're kind of like bounded. <laughs> you cannot do anything. But starting, you know, next semester, some of you, I won't say most of you, some of you uh, are free. You can, you know, find part time job or, or off campus. Full time job. Yeah, maybe you can find full time job too. Right? If they are not scholarship, they can do, yeah, you can do full time job. Uh, Taiwanese and international students, the same, I'm saying. Okay, next. Then uh, the scholarship application requirement are as follows. The application can be filed only after the proposal for the capital project is approved by the licensor, as I said. So for those of you who are thinking of applying in February, think of the things that you need to do between now and the end of February. Yeah. Can you tell what is procedure? So what are you going to do yeah. between now and the Write the proposals and then go to visit advisor and uh, let advisor read the proposal and approve it before uh, prepare 
other applications such as transcript mm -hmm. um, list the activities mm -hmm. that relate to the application and then submit to the office. Mm -hmm. Okay, basically, yeah, this is yes. the right procedure. Adding to that, we need you to provide your, uh, we already have the name, so you feel this advisor, we need you to provide the title, okay. the potential uh, to topics of your uh, capstone project. We want to ensure that you are on the right track. You are not doing something, you are not writing something about delicious food, you know, <laughs> somewhere. Well, uh, but it, it, it's, it, it's about new media representation, representation uh, delicious food, it's, it's fine. <laughs> See the difference? New media, media or new media. Okay. Right. Each student can only be granted one during their study at society. Yeah, we we'll talked about that. And when submitting the, uh, the application form, please attach a copy of your transcript. It doesn't have to be the official one, but just a copy and uh, an approved proposal for it. So we need your advisor to sign. I think we need his or her comments too. Sometimes the professor will just do your favors, right, to sign, but maybe he or she hasn't <coughs> read your proposal yet. So we need, uh, we, we will come up with some form for your uh, proposal. So there are two things. One is your proposal application. The second one is the scholarship application. These are two different things, but they are related. Yeah. All right, everyone else. Okay, and uh, the capital, and okay, this is uh, optional. Your, um, I mean, the supporting information on your acti activity participation or contribution. This, this is optional. If you say, I don't want, because uh, I have a very high GPA, 4.0, right? And, uh, my, my proposal is excellent. I will use <laughs> these two criteria to apply for the scholarship. Fine, yeah. You don't have to provide any information on this part, yeah. You need to be that confident, right, <laughs> to, yeah, to ignore this part. Okay, and next. The grant is a, yeah, uh, okay. will form okay. So, when I look at your proposals, I will exclude uh, the names of your thesis advisor, then I'll see who else can be the reviewers of this uh, proposal uh, scholarship. I will form that review ad hoc review committee. And uh, it will be anonymous, so I won't let you know because they will they, they are under pressure, right? So I won't let I, I won't let you know who these people are. But they will be uh, uh, experts in these areas. In, in the areas of your research. And the number of awardees for each candidate depends on the number of applicants and the quality of the proposal. So here's what we have in mind. But it doesn't have to be, have to happen that way. Uh, for our uh, fund allocation, we have one, is a one, uh, one excellent, okay. outstanding, okay. One outstanding and three excellent. Is a one, two, three. But it doesn't need to happen that way. Maybe there are more, right? More ex uh, outstanding proposals. Or there are more excellent proposals. Then the ratio would not be one, two, three. Maybe one to four, one to five. So it depends on the quality of your proposals. And the former will be, I mean, the outstanding category. If you get this grant, it will be 10,000. 10,000. 100,000. Oh, 100. Okay. 100,000. Excuse me. 100,000. 100,000. See, if you are doing your internship at the same time, you will get 100,000, right? Then it's 60,000. And you are doing your <laughs> overseas learning at the same time, too. And another 120,000. That should be enough, right? 18, 28, okay. 280,000, 280, yeah, for one semester. Would, is that enough for you to survive? Okay. Uh, you right? I have a time into now, so I have a question about the Texas project and application. So if uh, I will do the overseas uh, internship, and I will be out of the country, can I uh, apply and I proceed? part of the 
uh, capstone projects and regulations like applying, proposal, like all the approvals via online or it should be online, 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 yeah. Online, yeah. Online, yeah. We won't, uh, it's not necessary to you to hand in. We need to be energy saving, yeah. try to get rid of as uh, many papers as possible. Well, for today, we need, uh, you know, for today, we, we are reluctant to print out the, you know, the PowerPoint because we cannot send to the electronic file. Otherwise, we try to make things you know, as electronic as possible because we, know, we have to be, you know, we have to follow energy saving uh, policy. So, uh, you don't need to be in Taiwan to apply for this grant. You can go abroad, probably in February or in May. You are not here. You are doing your overseas. You can still send your application, you know, uh, because these things will be conducted uh, electronically, online. Yeah. All right. Any any questions about this part? Thank you. I'm you need to go. Yes. Yeah. Fine. All right. Then the suspension of approval of this qualification. If the content of the application document are falsified or the content of the capstone project violate academic ethics, the grant will be revoked and the approved grant should return to the program. I think this is uh, common sense. Don't, don't be the copycat. Don't plagiarize. And it just reminds me, if you haven't taken the online lessons, the academic ethics lesson for two or three hours, you should, yeah, you should. I, 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 I should send a reminder to your advisors. Six hours. Six hours, okay, yeah, six hours. And you also have, need to pass the test for the thesis. Uh, ethics, ethics. So I would remind your thesis advisors before you start writing your proposal, you need to finish your six hour ethics lessons online. It's free, right? It's free. Uh, you can just complete it within. Six hours. <laughs> yeah. Actually, you don't have to read all the lessons of, of six. Just pass the test. Yeah. You pass the test? You don't have to read it all. Just try to pass the test. Yes. Uh, like on once a day, if you fail, you can try it yeah. uh, tomorrow and uh, until you pass it. Yeah, but. Um, <laughs> but uh, okay. but that's a, thank you for sharing the tips. But, <laughs> but, but, but you need to do follow, do follow the academic ethics uh, uh, guideline. Otherwise, I mean, nowadays people are very, very strict about the, you know, the plagiarizing thing, and uh, they would use that software to check. Right? What was the, what, what's, what's the name of that software? To check the writing. Yeah, yeah. So you have to check yourself to check whether you know. The percentage of your contents is similar to other <laughs> papers, so it should be lower than what percent? Which? 20? 20 percent. So, you know, uh, the copycat thing happens most of the time in your literature review. If you review relevant literature, sometimes you just you know, cut and paste, cut and paste, then you just, uh, you know, you're just writing the same thing that some other people have already done. So, well, okay, anyway, take the lessons, the online lessons, and get the certificate, right? There's a certificate. There's a certificate. So, uh, do not take the lessons after you finish your proposal. You should do that before you write your proposal. All right, so who will be the reviewers of the grant? As I said, that the, uh, they will exclude your thesis advisors, and, okay, this is the Taiwanese regular. Relatives within three degrees of kinship. Actually, I don't know what this means, that three degrees of kinship. <laughs> so your grandma, <laughs> your husband of mine, your dog. Oh. Anyone can explain that? <laughs> <laughs> your, your uncle is your uncle. Your uncle is my uncle. Well, normally it won't happen, right? Just, uh, we, we just have to, you know, uh, you know, declare this to you know, justify that uh, we are not right? But anyway, so, his other interest was the applicant. Wow, other interest. Uh, 
conflict of interest of her relevant interest. You are working together, you are boyfriend and girlfriend. I don't think it will happen, right? You will have, okay. Because the reviewer will be, well, anyway, okay, I won't say too, too, too much about that. So, uh, in a word, we will form an ad hoc committee that is fair to everybody. So don't be afraid, don't worry that this is not fair to you. We, as I uh, mentioned earlier, if you apply for the February grant, the possibility is high. I won't say everybody can get a grant, but the possibility is high because not many people are competing with you. But if you want to do it in May, the possibility is high too, but a little lower <laughs> than the possibility in February. I hope that this will encourage you to finish your proposal as early as possible. Yeah. All right, next. Oh, okay, this is the form looks like. What the form looks like. So after your proposal has been approved, it's approved by your advisor. You need to fill out this form for the scholarship application. So these are the uh, basic information parts. And here, okay, here is the one that you need to to use your, I won't say imagination, you need to list <laughs> this optional part. Please list them, list them, not write the composition, okay? Itemize, itemize your participation and your contribution and provide evidence, photos, certificates, or emails, correspondence. Just let us know that those things did happen in your life, academically, and for the public good, not for your um, self-interest. Yeah. So you need to sign, and you also need your advisor to sign on this part. OK, just, just take this one page or two page? Just one page, right? Okay. All right. Any questions about this form? So except for this scholarship of application, uh, we will still have another one. It's like a proposal application, right? Yeah, wow, well, okay, but we don't have a proposal application form. But we do need you to let us know that you passed your proposal. So yeah, you can come up with uh, the person. I, will, I, will, yeah, I think that's at the end of this uh, uh, PowerPoint. Yeah, I'll let you know the procedure next. Okay. Oh, by the way, um, you can also apply for other grants in addition to this grant. It's not like uh, your full scholarship. If you have this, then you don't can, can I have that one. Yeah. So you can apply for other grants. It's not mutual, and they are not mutually exclusive because uh, we don't want to bind you. you know? We know that a hundred, even a thousand, a hundred thousand, it's not a big deal, right? So yeah, if, you, if there are other grants or scholarship provided by the university or elsewhere, yeah, try, try to apply them. Yeah, they are not mutually exclusive. Unless, those grants, those scholarships require that you cannot get this grant. Yeah. We don't have that restriction here. Yeah. All right, next one. Okay, so we're going uh, to talk about the third part, highlights of your uh, the qualification for your thesis advisor. Yeah. Next one. So after your thesis proposal gets approved, we will, we'll, hey, okay, here's the thing that's important. So. Uh, we will let you know first, and we will let your advisor know like, uh, like later. Because none of your thesis advisor know about this part yet. We will pay them, in addition to the pay by the university. We will pay them. They, they, they will get extra pay. So we do expect your thesis advisors to advise you salary. So please don't look for an advisor that just sign on your proposal. We need you to find one that really helps you, helps you to work on your proposal and uh, the final paper. Yeah, because uh, we will pay your advisors. Uh, in addition, the university will pay your advisor too. So he or she will get additional pay. Yeah. So some of you ask ask us about the. Uh, the the what the, the workshop uh, for how to write uh, thesis. We, we will see. We'll see. We, we're looking for uh, scholars, professors who 
know more about capstone projects. Uh, if we if we find um, qualified ones, we will hold a workshop or a lecture sometime next semester. But even if we don't, your thesis advisor uh, is responsible for advising you. We will let you, we will send all the materials we have to your thesis advisor so let them know what we expect from a capstone project. But for the traditional thesis, we will, we are not going to do anything about that uh, because this is the default version of the university. And even if you write your uh, write a traditional thesis, your advisor will still get this additional pay. Okay. All right. And uh, okay, this is the pay. Not much, but uh, if your advisor uh, is taking say ten students, <laughs> yeah, it's a uh, it's a lot. Right? Anyway, uh, but we we will. We we will also like uh, we also like to have some quality control. We'll see how it goes. Uh, your advisor can take more than five students each semester, but the maximum pay we will provide to your thesis advisor is, uh, is fifty thousand and three dollars. Yeah. So when you are looking for your advisor, it's also something that you have to be careful. Uh, if he or she is a very, very busy person, and he or she has already taken 10 students, do you want to go find her, to him or her, to be your thesis advisor? He or she is, is already very, very busy. I don't know, maybe it's possible, but just look at the, 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 the quality of uh, Guidance you can get from uh, that specific person. Yeah. Okay. You know, uh, for those of you who have followed the news in Taiwan, uh, Taiwanese media, that uh, like you know some some pe some professor you know, at NTU National Taiwan University, he had taken like uh, 20, 30 students, and uh, well, you know, plagiarism. Yeah, plagiarism. Yeah. So we don't want that to happen. Sometimes, if the professor is very, very busy, it can happen, yeah. All right, next one. And, okay, you want to change your advisors. Sometimes it happens. If you change, changes your advisors, and your previous advisor has already got paid, sorry, we cannot get the money back. So, uh, there are several ways you can do that. Uh, if this person doesn't mind taking extra money, then you don't pay, her, pay him or her. But if this person already has already known about the regulations here, uh, we won't pay him or her again. So perhaps, I mean, I know that uh, that's kind of practice in other departments, say uh, in college communication, the student pays for the advisor. See what I'm saying here? If you change your advisor and the first advisor already got paid, and he or she doesn't want to return the money, <laughs> then uh, maybe you, you should pay the second year, your new advisor. Uh, but maybe this new advisor does, doesn't, doesn't want to take your money in this spot. In other words, we cannot, we, are, we cannot afford to pay twice to your fees and advisors. And unless, unless if there are special cases or uh, some irresistible reasons, so we will discuss them. If, if the fault doesn't come from you, it's something you know unexpected. You, you can find the application that we can uh, we will discuss it among our community. Sometimes I don't I, I don't really want it to happen, but I, I, it just reminds me of the experience by uh, my friend, my friend, some of my friends have had in the past in the US. They were working on working on their dissertation thesis with their advisors, and their advisors are very old. <laughs> and just right, just a month before the oh, so then the advisor passed away. Yeah, and for things like that, it's unexpected. And uh, we, we can take it into consideration. See what I'm saying? But this is a very, very unfortunate uh, case. Uh, I don't, we don't want it to happen. Okay, next one. Okay, this is the procedure. 
Okay, for those of, especially for those of you who are thinking of applying for the grant uh, in February. First, no matter whether you you are interested in writing a traditional thesis or capstone project, decide on a topic. Look for an advisor. Can you do this first and this later? How how, how do you do this? Look for an advisor first. Sometimes I don't think the advisor will take you, right? You don't have any time to buy so look for a potential topic and look for an advisor. Sometimes it will take you many time to finalize this procedure. Then report to GCID office for verification. Uh, right now, as I said, that we already have names of your thesis advisors, but we don't have the topics of your So we will try to formulate a form, a Google form, for you to fill in. So once you have decided on the topic, you let us know what your topics are. So we can just take a very quick look at the topics to see whether they uh, fit the educational purpose of our program. Yeah. Then uh, write a proposal, 3,000 words, right? Then you have your proposal approved by your advisor. Well, I'd like to remind you that sometimes don't just uh, send the proposal to your advisor and give him, her, him or her one day to review. Sometimes it takes many time to revise the proposal. So they so say, oh, tomorrow, six hour uh, deadline, the first deadline is February 28th, right? So, uh, you uh, submit your proposal, the first draft to your, your advisor, February 25th. Do you think that's, that's okay? February 25th. Uh, <laughs> so what is the uh, appropriate? Time, timeline for you to give your at least your first draft to your advisor. No idea. I would say before the Chinese New Year break. Yeah, before this Chinese. But your advisor may be angry. This is my Chinese New Year break. You have to do it. Well, at least right after Chinese New Year, uh, February first. Yeah. Don't let him or her read your first draft within three days or one day. Yeah. Give him or her uh, plenty of time to review and give you uh, comment and suggestions. Then, uh, okay, then for, for those of you who are writing capstone projects, you can continue to consider uh, to apply for the grant. And you write a, okay, then after you get the grant, you write your thesis. And before you have your oral defense, you can discuss it with your advisor to form a committee of these three people. Sometimes, okay, it varies. Sometimes the advisor will have his or her opinion of who should be in a committee. Sometimes the advisor doesn't have any idea at all. So you can propose the potential name to your advisor. So there's no fixed rules. There are, there are no fixed rules regarding who should be in. As long as those people, I mean, their qualification fit the criteria we have. An assistant professor or above, or experts or scholars in special areas, or professionals with you know, very um, well-known experiences, and, uh, and here, if, they are, if they don't have PhD, even if they don't have master degree, they are fine. I mean, if they can be uh, accepted by, the, by your advisor first and by the program then uh, they can be on the phone. We, we need, for that, we need to have a meeting to discuss whether those people are uh, qualified or not. Then you apply for your oral defense. This is a university requirement. You need to apply for your oral defense. Then, uh, okay, at least three months, three months lag uh, between your proposal and the thesis final. You have your oral defense and revise the thesis. You have finished, then you get the degree. Okay, then this is the last last page, right? Yeah. Alright, any any question about this part? And normally uh what's the daylight for for applying for the oral The daylight? So Christine, you can check check on that, right? University deadline to apply for the oral. If you want to graduate in spring. Mm -hmm. 如果春季班要毕业最晚什么时候要oral? In the past, I think before the energy, uh, when you submit your 
final version of this is by the end of July. So if you want to save some time for you to revise your final paper, you better have your proposal by the end of June. Oh, by the way, for those of you who are thinking of graduating, <laughs> next semester, there was a graduation ceremony for you to attend in May. Yeah, keep that in mind. Yeah, yeah you need to borrow the, the guns, right? The who, yeah. Yes, here at NCCU, people attend graduation ceremony before they actually graduate. Mm -hmm. That's a thing. Yeah. So, uh -huh. yeah. After you <coughs> apply your oral defense, you have to finish your oral defense before the, the end of the semester. Before the end of the semester, yeah. that is May. what date? <laughs> June or July? I think June. I think June. Maybe July. July. But you you need to. Yeah, but you need to revise, right? Revise your. Try try not to do that in late July, because you have to finish everything you know, by the end of July. You want to get your diploma by the end of July. Uh, well, in the past two years or three years, because of the pandemic, the university kind of loses, you know, uh, of the policy. Even if you have your oral in September, <laughs> you can, you can, you can consider as people you know, graduating in the previous semester because of pandemic. But now the border is open, so no such thing, yeah, no such benefit. I would say think of June, the end of June. It's for your own good. Yeah. And if you care about the graduation ceremony, attend it in May and uh, borrow. I think sometimes, I think the university has a certain day for you to borrow the, the who that guy, you know. Well, anyway, uh, that's not the most important thing. The most important thing is to, yeah, the writing proposal, right, to get it done. Uh, as smooth as possible. All right, any other questions? I actually have several questions. So um, some of them are from the other classmates as well. So uh, the first one is like, is there like a deadline for the custom project for us? Because like, if I, I apply for the scholarship in May, so when should I finish my custom project? Or oh, actually, we don't have like a deadline. So basically, I can have the topic and then I can do it within one or two semesters, it's still fine, is it? Oh, okay. No, no. Yeah. Wait, you, you did it in three years. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Normally, we, we, we will expect you to finish it that semester. Mm -hmm. yeah, that. But if you apply in May, I would say oh, it's, no. not, it's not easy to finish in June, right? Because mm -hmm. it, there should be a three months lag. So I kind of expect. You know, applicants of that type should finish in the next fall semester. And then uh, for the uh, for the thesis committee, you mentioned that they will also receive payment from the right? <coughs> only the advisor, not the uh, committee only the advisor, member. Not the the committee member will get paid from the university. All right. Yeah, from for, because for their attendance, participate in the oral. Yeah. Alright, because like, uh, with that being said, for the uh, previous question is that if I find like a professor from one of the universities in Hong Kong, and then like the university can still process, or actually the professor is from the state, so the university can still process the payment, right? Yes, but uh, the thing is they will get less pay because of the... Exchange rate, definitely different. Yeah. But then, uh, I mean like, would GCIT do the communication, actually I have to be the one that tell the committee member that oh you will be being paid by the university and then I mean like that's kind of like we can do that package. yeah we can do that. as a matter of fact when we um, we have processed a lot of things like that for the, the guest lectures mm -hmm. a lot of guest lectures are from you know abroad so we have to do all those things you know uh, the thing is that they will be deducted right so some taxes will be deducted so the university will pay like uh, 15, uh, 1500 only 
Fifteen hundred. Fifteen hundred. Fifteen. 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 F
your your proposal, your advisor has the final say with what what should be in your what should be included in in the contents. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying here? Depend on advisor. Yeah, your advisor. Yeah. So your advisor has has uh, I mean will play a very important role. So this is another thing I like to uh, um, remind you. Please, please maintain a good relationship with your advisors. Yeah, because uh, if you <laughs> if you are not in a good terms with your advisors, you know it, it's difficult. Yeah, it's difficult. Yeah, there are a lot of examples like that. So maintain the harmonious. I, I won't say that you just follow whatever your advisor said, but maintain a good communication, you know, with, with your advisors. And uh, we will let your advisor decide what should be in your proposal. Yeah, as long as the, the, those formats are just suggested, but when we review your application, we'll try to look for those elements. But if your advisor wants you to include more elements, and that's your advisor's uh, rights, right? That's her, their rights to do that. Th does that make sense to you? You know, I cannot require your advisor to to do this and that. This university is free. <laughs> yeah, we, we give freedom, yeah, free academic freedom to the professors. A any any more questions? So just uh, start working on your uh, thesis and uh, proposal. It's important for you and important for you to to get a degree and get the scholarship too. Yeah. If you have any other questions, you can uh, come up to us later. Yeah. Because uh, okay. By the way, because uh, as I said, that these are just uh, drafts. Uh, we are going to. If you have any uh, uh, suggestions, we can revise them and uh, discuss them. You know, maybe next Tuesday. So any anything that you like us to modify, especially for the grant, the, the scholarship part. So that's fine to everybody. Do you want us to to reduce the amount of grants that so everybody can have the scholarship? Or do you think that's okay? Like not a hundred thousand, probably eight eighty thousand. So but everyone can have eighty thousand. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But I think it's alright to give it. Okay. So uh, so the competitive. Basis is fine with everybody. But I, I'm, I want to ask about the competitive ratio. Is too high? I mean, like if we have like ten. I don't know. We only have a look at the quality, right? Yeah. So how many of us submitted? Yeah. One to three. Basically, it's one to one hundred thousand to three fifty thousand. Imagine the grant would be like two hundred and eighty thousand per semester for the scholarship. Is it? Uh yes, but if we haven't used, we have certain quota for the for February and certain for May. But if we haven't used up the quota for February, we can you know yeah save them. To so this means like just only one people uh, will have one hundred thousand, right? Um, not that much. Just depends on the quality. The quality. Mm -hmm. But our original plans one, two, three. One a hundred thousand to three fifty thousand. But this is our plan. Wow, it was, but perhaps everybody's. I don't know. Yeah. Please. <laughs> <laughs> it, it depends on how many people, right, apply, apply yeah, for the scholarship. How many people will will yeah. apply for the? I don't know. Yeah. So many, I, I, I would say that for those of you who are here, you are the. It, it, it's very likely, right? Yeah, many of you will apply. But the grant will only be guaranteed for uh, these two batches, right? I mean, like for all right. Because we haven't applied for the fund for the next <laughs> academic year yet, so uh, it depends on how much we, we we can get for the next academic year. I would say the early birds get the worms, you know. Just uh, try, yeah. Because for this, uh, okay. Uh, honestly, now we have forty three students registered in our program, and for this grant, we have allocated. Quotas for 40, 40 students. Some for uh, one to, and the ratio is one to three, right? So I think the total is like, a, how much? 200 one. 200 one Taipei. 
something like that. But uh, I need to be, um, I need to calculate how much for the uh, hundred thousand and how much for the fifty thousand. Uh, perhaps there's um, the ratio will be, will be changed. Yeah. So even if you cannot make it in February, do that in May. Yeah, only three people, right? <laughs> only three people will not get a grant. So, luckily, yeah, only three people. But if you if you miss the deadline, then next. Next year, next academic year, no, no guarantee at all. Uh, so if we don't have enough money, then we, we won't have the, you know, the, the grant. So that's why we, uh, we didn't list this grant in our application brochure. Because we are, not sh we are not certain whether we can make it available. No, we, we are certain can make it available to you, for those of you who are thinking of applying in February or May. So we make an announcement. But we, we won't post it on the website because this is not, you know, it's, it's not our promise. Yeah. We just happen to have this yeah, fund available. Yeah. Okay, so much for the uh, have some project and strategic thesis. If you have other questions about the, the internship, you are welcome to stay. Yeah. All right, so uh, have a good the end of semester, have a good break. <laughs> Yes, just, just to survive it. Truckling, truckling. And if you are too tired, you can come out and have a cup of coffee here and watch the well, beautiful. <laughs> yeah. All right. So uh, happy weekend. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, you you can uh, if your 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 classmate who uh, missed this session today, yeah, they can copy this uh, half copies here. But tell them, let them know that this is just a job. We we can't we cannot send out the fire. Yeah. Do we have lunch here? Yeah. Yeah, you can have your lunch here. Yeah. 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 It's okay. It's all right. Uh, you choose that. Both are vegetarian. Mm. We have uh, And for Zhang is non veg, right? Uh, for G. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> 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 I don't know.